Hello everyone, hello and welcome once again to Satsang, the personal communion with truth, to discover your own truth, that is why you are here. All I can do is point you towards it. Uh, only you can walk it, walk the path. Only you can make the discovery. The teacher can point the direction. You can also consistently point out the, the potholes and the detours and the cul-de-sacs you can get stuck in. And, and do my best to uh, show you how to avoid those. But many you can't because if you simply follow the path that has been laid out by somebody else, it's not your path. You're going to have to walk it, which means you're going to end up in some cul-de-sacs that appear to be the road to heaven. You're going to fall down into some ditches uh, because this is we. This is how we learn what a ditch is and what it feels like to be in one, which is the wisdom that says, oh, how do I foresee those ditches in advance and not need to? And, and not need to yet once again fall into it to realize I have. I entitled this show, Life, The Flow of Opposites. Show, it's from my radio. <laughs> the Flow of Opposites. Really the harmonious flow of opposites. Because that's all life is. In modern spirituality, um, and, and, and even more so in self-help, metaphysics, law of attraction, and all that sort of thing, there's this, this insane idea that somehow we can live in a state of perpetual bliss, that we can always get what we want, you know, that everything just flows to us from the genie of the universe <clears throat> with no regard whatsoever with the inevitable necessity of the flow between opposites. There would be no light without dark. There'd be no masculine without feminine. There'd be no death without birth or birth without death. Yet this is what we seek, the impossible. And in that seeking of this rarefied state that cannot possibly exist, we stake our claim and find ourselves feeling completely at a loss, suffering needlessly because we don't accept life as it is. We want to try to force it to be as we want it to be. This is the insanity of humanity. And it is insane. You cannot make the impermanent permanent can't do it. Nobody can. Buddha couldn't. <laughs> you cannot stop the flow of events. But the fact is, if you were able to stop the flow of events, life would end. Because it is nothing but a flow. Your body, your life, every experience you have, every relationship you have, is a constant flow of constantly modulating uh, energy of all sorts of, of all sorts of dis different types. A relationship is never the same one day to the next, one moment to the next. It's always it's always dancing. Right? There's always the tension and release in music, otherwise it isn't music. You always have to have the, the tension in any kind of dramatic art, movie, literature, a play. Something that has to come to a climax and have that final resolution. And the bigger the the bigger that that climatic moment is, the more the more satisfying the resolution is. We want to run from the dark and live constantly in the light, the light chasing, you might say. But we find the discontent there. We're simply trying to avoid that which, that which is unseemly to us. 
Why don't we stop for a moment and, and ask a very simple question? Why is it that I want that? Why is it not perfectly okay just the way it is? What if the universe, God, the creator, didn't make a mistake, and this is exactly what is supposed to be happening? Wouldn't it make you question your disagreement with it? Rather than disagreeing with what's, what's going on, wouldn't you, wouldn't you be more interested in why you'd be disagreeing with what is and was supposed to be? What is it in me that thinks I could do a better job? <laughs> why this, this constant self-referencing of what's good for me, what's good for me, what's good for me? with very little thought about the universal implications of that. That's selfishness, that's greed, that's the kind of narcissistic um, self-indulgence that is quite literally de destroying the planet. Literally. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. The only thing in, that happens in nature that has perpetual growth is cancer. <laughs> and it destroys its host. And yet, this idea of a, some kind of a perpetual utopia is embodied in our, in our, in our, our nationalism. It's embodied in our, our economics. Capitalism is based on the idea of, of continuous growth, never-ending. Right? The health of economy is always, uh, is always assessed, not by the quality of life of everyone in it, but by... By, by the growth of it. It's bigger now than it was before. Well, how big can something get because, before it consumes everything in sight and dies? This is, an, a, this is a magnification at the level of the whole world of what we simply do individually constantly. We fight with what is. We want the expansion, but not the contraction. We want to breathe in, but we don't want to breathe out. <laughs> we want the heart to contract, but we never want it to expand, right? <laughs> we never want it to contract. But isn't it the contraction of the heart that feeds the body? It's not the expansion. It's exactly the opposite. When the heart contracts, the body is nourished. When your life contracts, your soul is nourished. This is, this is a fact. We must root out of ourselves, of our, out of our psyche, of, out, of our, out of our mentality, both individually and culturally, this idea of things should be different than they are. As long as I'm engaging with that, I will suffer. Mildly, just a, 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 a constant discontent which leads to a level of stress, which of course affects everything, and sometimes intensely, panic, severe suffering. Right? I don't want my life to be like this. It's got to be something else. We're tormented by our minds. It's that simple. Life is not at war with you. How could the universe possibly be at war with itself? How can life want to harm itself? But our egoic minds imagine us as being something other than that. There's life, and then there's me. There's this universe, and then there's me. As if you could possibly be separated. As if you could possibly be two. To totally accept life as it is, is to completely harmonize with all of it. The ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, the beautiful, the ugly, the wondrous, the, the horrid. And with no clinging to, to any particular one of those positions, without holding on to anything, you become free. There's the only place where freedom will be found. Freedom is not having things as you want. It's recognizing that the wanting of things to be different than they are 
is a moral and a psychological insanity, and it kills everything it touches. And that is the suffering one feels. The only suffering you feel is from your unwillingness to, to let yourself conform to the, to, the, to the truth of life, the truth of all things, this flow of, of opposites. And when our lives get, put, lives get put into a particular set of conditions that seem like you simply can't take it anymore, what life is doing is crushing the ego. The ego can't take it anymore because the ego won't, doesn't want to let go. I want things to be the way I want them, God damn it. Right? And sometimes it can get so tenacious and hold on so tight that life just has to squeeze it until it pops, until it breaks. And life's more than willing to do that. The truth of you is willing to inflict all sorts of things on you in order to get you to let go go of that which is actually killing you. The circumstances are not killing you. It's holding to what you want to be instead of surrendering to what is. That is suffering in a nutshell. This is the spiritual path. It is a path of letting go. It is a path of surrender. It's the deeper meaning of surrender this flow of opposites, to which we simply surrender because it's what is. It is the truth. And the truth holds all the cards. <laughs> Always will. It will not conform itself to my will. It simply won't. So either conform, I either conform myself, my thoughts, my feelings, my ideas, my aspirations to truth, or I will suffer because it won't bend. <laughs> it can't. It's the nature of truth. It is changeless. So on that note, welcome everyone once again to Satsang.